Roger here. Hey, I'm uh, going to try to capture a little construction on these conveyor belts. This is a soldering thing, that's how I do it. This is actually a very inexpensive soldering iron, and I've got that on 220. There's the indicator arrow of this, so 220 Celsius is really what we're going for. These are the kind of the main part of the conveyor belt, not the legs. I'm just going to trim one of these off. Now the sides aren't folded yet here, so what we need to do is fold those down. So I take it and place it on a like you know hard surface here. This is a little piece of Teflon, and I just bend that. Okay, just like that, and get a nice like little 90 degree angle there and then flip it over and do the other side okay okay so now those are positioned correctly but they're not any support they're kind of floppy so now i'm going to take one of these little gizmos over here uh, these this is the lower part of the con conveyor belt i've got my top part and i've got the bottom part by the way there's no actual like rollers on this kit all right so the i'm going to use this as a pointer here but these uh rectangular that's where the rollers would be but you're going to cover it up with a belt so i didn't worry too much about actual rollers and place this underframe inside and get it all lined up and this is where i get out my magnifying lamp or where but you're just trying to get so this is again on 220, so it's going to melt the material a little bit. You're basically welding the underframe onto the top part, okay? And then once I've got, it doesn't really matter if I skip over to the other side or or how I do it, as long as I'm just getting it started here. And, and just getting it started is the hardest part, okay? It's really hot, but it's a really tiny tip, so I can get it very close to my fingers without getting burnt. What I really want to do is get this under my magnifying lamp so I can see what the heck I'm doing because just my glasses, I cannot tell what I'm doing. This is polylactic acid, PLA, a cornstarch derivative, and melts at a low temperature comparatively uh, as compared to say styrene. Melting point is about 200 and about 200 degrees Celsius, maybe a little less. Uh, I use my iron on 220 for the most part for the lowest setting sometimes if you get a little bit more familiar with it you can increase the temperature now the corners it's probably good to check these I can see there's a little little nub right there that's kind of in the way and you know, normally I would have worked a little more slowly and maybe caught that. Frames coming together now. Just want to make sure that you know you're gonna connect these together later. So I can pretty much weld the entire edge which is gonna help considerably with the strength. And this part is complete, relatively strong. So what we want to do next is connect it to another part. Depends on how long you want your, you'll have to decide how long you want your entire belt to be. 20 feet each in HO scale. So we're looking at a 40 foot at this point. And so now again, just to line those up, uh, you can get them set on a flat surface. You just got to start working on the soldering. This could uh, be a point where you could um, bring in a piece of scrap. And I'm just going to attack it right here. The belt's going to go there, so we're not going to see this anyway. But it's not a visual distraction, even if you could see it. I went and got my 
my flats here. Okay, now I'm getting that thing. These are flat nosed. So the cool thing about the soldering iron is that you can do a lot. And that's kind of why I'm showing this and, and promoting this. And you know, you're, here you are getting a real not polished version of how to put one of these things together. This is what I want you to check is to make sure that these these are in plane with this. Okay, they're in the same plane as close as possible. All right, they don't have to be perfect. Add that to our other good one. Thirty one minutes. Uh, hi, Roger again here. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the conveyor belt belt. This material that I put in the kits, it's just ribbon that I got at the craft store. It comes in various colors, light or kind of a, there's the black one, there's kind of a golden looking one, and then maybe a ivory color. After I get done with this stuff, painting it and then putting some, uh, weathering it with like dirt or some kind of a compound. It seems like no matter what color I start with, I, I pretty much end up with with the same color. And I, I put in about 20 inches or so in the kit. I can't get that all in. So that should wrap around at least a, a three unit. So this is this is three, three units from the kit. And I think you're going to find the kits have more than three units. I'm, I'm, I'm stuffing as many in there as I can right now. And so that's a, I think a 60 foot belt, which is sort of like extra special. And I had to custom make this little support here at the end, which was a little bit not in the kit. It was, it was a little bit cheating, although I used parts from the kit to do it. Anyhow, I digress. What I want to talk about is the, the belt material and how to go from, from this kind of stuff to this kind of stuff and then get that wrapped and secured around the conveyor belt apparatus so that it looks somewhat believable okay let's cut right there and go to the painting room you are looking at the craft painting room here at coastman's and this table itself is turning into a work of art over the years of pouring paint on it by accident this is a little bottle of gray paint mixed with some thinner it is water-based it is composed of two colors that i've been very fond of the Waverly Ivory and the Waverly Ink. I got these from Walmart, but I've actually uh, recently kind of just changed on my shopping preferences over to uh, another brand here. This is the Chalky Chick. I've been playing with that one. I got this one, I think, on Amazon. It's also found maybe on their own website. I'm not sure. And then this is my latest uh, edition is the Chalk Mountain, which seemed to be the best deal. This is a, a big 32 ounces of bright white very useful. Anyhow, so what I do is I mix up a little of my favorite thinner, which is Mr. Joe Fugit. I have to mention and give credit to his Acrylics Guide book. He talks about the economy thinner 
And there's a formula in there that includes something about Arbor All Window Cleaner, which is ammonia-free, and some other ingredients. And that is an extremely useful diluent for like these chalk-based paints. And I can then run them through an airbrush, which is kind of why it's in this airbrush. This is kind of an airbrush container here. So what I've been doing, though, for the as far as the belt goes, is just... I open this up and there you can see the paint inside and this is just the you know white and black makes gray so kind of roll up the belt and just enough to get it inside that container and I'm probably going to get paint on me but that's okay and there we go I got these little toothpicks sticking out of here that just blocks the holes to the airbrush container so that the paint doesn't come out I kind of hold them with my finger and give it a little shake so that paint which is a little thinner than it would be otherwise with that special economy thinner in there mixes into that belt real easy okay and it's just going to be soaking and so now what I need to do is just kind of drain out this is where I'm going to get wet in the stats okay hard to get it back in the jar I'm just kind of getting some of the extra paint off of that and then I've got a couple of different compounds here. One is just dirt. I baked it in the oven for like at 350 for probably a couple of hours just to try to make sure that all of the living creatures were pretty much taken care of. But this isn't my favorite for the belt. Actually, this one, this I think is a grout now that I think of it. And it's, uh, it might be a nutmeg colored grout. That's the one that I felt really works great. So what I'm gonna do actually it's just sort of dip that in the grout or get the grout on there somehow and work it over pretty good my hands are gonna get really you know you might wear gloves or something but okay, so I'm kind of the paint is absorbing that and I'm also kind of just rubbing it in there a little bit and that so this is like basically instant weathering I'm gonna let this dry I'll show you what that looks like so I have a, a, a heater box here um, and I'm gonna spin around I'm gonna turn the heat on and I'm going to plop that in there and let that dry. It's going to take not very long for that to be thoroughly dry. So you might have to wait a little longer if you don't have this set up. Okay, so I've cleaned up a little bit there. got my fingers back to normal. And just wanted to talk. Here's the, the uh, what a finished belt looks like. So this is the material, and it's kind of stiff. It was a little bit dusty after having uh, been treated with that uh, nutmeg colored grout. So what I did was I shop backed it really good and just kind of shook it around and it sucked up all the extra stuff. That left me with this, which it still yields a little bit of a dirt colored compound, that nutmeg grout. Pretty nice, I think, as far as a weathered belt would go. The next thing that I've been kind of enjoying doing is adding these little, uh, I'm not sure what you would call them. They're like carriers of the material that would be on the belt and moving the logs and the bark and things like that up the conveyor belt if this were a conveyor belt going to say a sawdust burner. I want to just talk about how I added those. I've been using this adhesive canopy glue. I'm a huge fan of this stuff. It sticks just about anything together. It's uh, kind of an acrylic compound. There's essentially no fumes with it which I like that part. I just take a little bit and put it in the dish and then I've been using a weathered HO scale 2x3s. You could use a 2x4, you could use a 1x2, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just basically gluing these on. And I, I used a ruler to space them. I think I did you know, roughly half an inch between the pieces and just worked my way along there. And I don't know, I think it used up maybe just a couple, two or three sticks. You'll see these are, these are quite peachy, the normal color that they come. I started out with uh, Dave Frary's 101 Tips for Building Model Railroad Structures book, and in that book he mentioned a sweet and sour weathering solution, and I've had just the best time with that, and then I've also learned that to make them gray, add a little bit of tannin from a black tea bag. Use the tea in full force, it will come out black. So I, I dilute it to just maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the tea, in a couple cups of water and I treat the basswood with that first and then I follow with the sweet and sour solution which is the steel wool dissolved in vinegar and that also needs to be diluted significantly or your wood will come out very dark um, but if you keep the, the the solutions very light in concentration then you get this um, 
much a lighter gray color. Once the belt is dry, then, and all the, I guess you could call them teeth, are in place, then it's really just a matter of wrapping it around the conveyor belt apparatus, of course, without damaging it, and, and trying to get it tight enough so that the belt will appear relatively flat. And it's certainly okay, I think, if it if it dips down just a little bit inside. So you can see I've actually, there's the belt. I don't know if you can see that, but it's inside the framework there. You can see it. Uh, so I wrapped it around the ends and then I had to kind of drag it through there. And that was a little bit of a delicate process uh, using the tweezers to kind of tug it along carefully. It seemed it kind of wants to catch on the little teeth as you pull it through there, but it's definitely possible to do that. Pulled it all the way through, pulled it around, and then used just a, you know, this is inexpensive super glue to secure the belt. And so I, I brought the belt all the way around and then I trimmed. You only need about a quarter to a half an inch of overlap to make the junction. And so I trimmed the belt and then pulled it as tight as I could without damaging the model. I measured and cut that so that there would be about a half an inch, maybe a quarter inch to a half an inch overlap. And then I used the super glue on the back side of the end that would be on top. I soaked that pretty good and then wrapped it around and held it for a good two minutes. Despite the tension, it, the bond held. I added a little bit of debris here I had to represent the debris that you would see maybe left on a conveyor belt if it were like slash or bark that were left on the belt for years then it would be uh, the sun would have discolored that and uh, it would be essentially kind of a silvery color same or similar as the um, the teeth on the belt there demonstrate a little bit i'm just going to show how i would go about that with this little guy this is only 20 feet so it is kind of cheating to show you the 20 footer uh, and how I do it and not show you the full Monte 60 footer, uh, which is a bit more complicated and takes a little more time. It's just a little more delicate to get the job done, but totally doable. Um, <clears throat> so with this guy, I'm just going to feed the material through, I'll find the end of it there and, and it goes and I mean, 20 feet is like nothing. It just goes right through, right? It's no problems, no hangups. Then I'm going to bring the ends around. And if I have to trim them, I will, but I've actually, to tell you the truth, already pre-tested this and I don't need to trim it. And there's there's the coverage. So it's it's not a full half an inch. It's only like maybe a quarter of an inch. So here we've got a little dish and some super glue. I want to put the glue on the end that's doing the overlapping. And that way it will minimize the amount of exposed uh, glue. Because, you know, the, the, the super glue is going to dry and be kind of shiny. So... That will kind of minimize um, that look. Uh, we don't want that shiny stuff on there because we worked so hard to get that matte look with the uh, grout or dirt or whatever you you use. So here I am. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there on the end. This is the gel version that I'm using. I, okay, so now the trick is to get that as tight as possible without breaking anything. Fold that over and make the connection and then hold it there. Okay, so right there, that's not bad. Now, there is a little bit of an overlapped seam here, right there, and we're gonna have to hide that, and we can do that with some of the uh, debris that I mentioned earlier, represents the the bark and the slash. Um, while I'm holding this, I'll, I'll talk more. Flip. A little bit of um, super glue under this edge just right on top of these little bridges under here and glue the belt down onto those structures to don't want the belt protruding upward because that would defy gravity and these belts were not lightweight belts they were sturdy strong belts uh, transporting uh, wood so here you can see that the belt hangs down below underneath and that's pretty realistic this could have been made maybe a little tighter but it's okay they're similar in tightness let that dry a little further i finish up the weathering uh this material here is the tiniest remnants 
uh, that have fallen out from dead branches. This I find it maybe could be uh, considered a realistic uh, cover for the conveyor belt. I brought this little part with me uh, that has the belt on it that we put on earlier and I've got my, my good stuff here that's going to be my uh, pretend bark and slash got a red container and I'm going to put a little bit of that canopy glue in there. Uh, you could probably get away with just regular white glue, um, but I'm just such a canopy glue addict that very refined. I imagine that the the uh, wood chips, um, the old dried out wood chips that were left on the belt uh, when the belt stopped a long time ago, that they would be right on these teeth here, belt teeth, or they do the job of, of carrying the stuff, you know, because that seam is present right there. I don't know. I'm going to just kind of cover that up with a little bit of uh, debris also. And I'm going to sprinkle a little of this on here. I'm just working right over the yogurt container. There we go. And you could also use real dirt if you, if you dried it. You can kind of go back through and pick around. All this canopy glue is going to dry super clear. When this dries, uh, we'll check it out. So again, this is the, the belt that we made and the belt wrapped around the conveyor belt. Um, thanks for watching and be sure to like the video. I sure appreciate your support and it's as fun for me as it is for you, guarantee. Have a great day. Just a quick follow up on our part that we worked on over there in the paint table. Uh, this is the end result. We've pretty much got the the canopy glue dry at this point holding on the little particles there and I like that I think that's okay